once, there was a beautiful, sweet, patient girl who lived with her mean stepmother and her two mean stepsisters. They were so mean, they made her do all the work in the household and even made her sleep in the fireplace ashes. They laughed at her all covered in ashes and called her Cinderella. One day, Cinderella planted a twig in the forest. She watered it with her tears, and it became a tall, strong tree, and a white bird came to rest in its branches. Cinderella knew, because she was kind and good, that the bird would help her when she was in need. And so she carried on doing the hard work and slept in the ashes without complaining. It just so happened that the prince was having a grand ball, and he invited all of the eligible women in the kingdom to join him in hopes of finding his bride. Cinderella's stepsisters flew into action, insisting that Cinderella wash their hair and help them prepare for the big night. They chose beautiful new gowns to wear, and all they could talk about was which one of them was going to marry the prince. Of course, Cinderella would have liked to go, too. She asked her stepmother politely if she might go, but the cruel woman laughed at her. No, you will not go, she said. You have no beautiful new gown to wear. The prince would not be interested in a girl like you. Cinderella looked so disappointed that her stepmother threw a basket of lentils into the fireplace ashes. Fine, she said. If you can pick out all of the lentils before it is time to leave, you may go to the ball. She knew it would be impossible for Cinderella to separate the lentils in time. So with that, she gathered up her daughters and off they went to the palace. But as soon as she was gone, Cinderella called to the birds for help and all kinds of beautiful birds appeared at the window. Help me please, she asked, and together they separated all the lentils from the ashes in plenty of time. Cinderella thanked them and ran out to the tree. She called to the white bird, Please, send down a dress for me to wear to the palace. And the bird sent a beautiful gown, prettier than anything Cinderella had ever seen. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you, she called. Quickly, she made her way to the palace and as soon as the prince saw her, he was stunned. He danced with her all night, which made all of the other maidens in the kingdom jealous. But as the night ended, she disappeared without even telling the prince her name. By the time her stepmother and stepsisters returned home, Cinderella was fast asleep in the ashes. The next day, Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters could hardly stand their excitement, the prince was throwing a second ball. Once again, they made Cinderella wash their hair, and they put on even prettier gowns than they had the night before. Once again, Cinderella politely asked her stepmother if she could go, but the woman laughed at her. Of course not, she said. But then, at Cinderella's disappointment, she threw a basket of grain into the fireplace ashes. Very well, she said. If you can pick out all of the grain before it is time to leave, you may go to the ball. And with that, she gathered up her daughters, and off they went to the palace. Once again, Cinderella called to the birds, and once again, they picked all the grain out of the ashes in plenty of time. After thanking them, Cinderella returned to the tree, and once more she said to the bird, Please, send down a dress for me to wear to the palace. The bird sent a gown even prettier than the last, and Cinderella thanked the bird and quickly made her way to the palace. Once again, the prince was overjoyed to see her, and he hardly paid attention to any other girl all night long. But as the evening was ending, she disappeared and was home asleep in the ashes before anyone else returned. The third day was just like the others. Once again, the prince promised to throw a ball, and once again, her stepsisters kept Cinderella busy all day with their preparations. Cinderella did not even have time to ask if she could go to the ball. By the time her stepmother and stepsisters headed off to the palace, Cinderella ran directly to the tree and called to the bird once more. 
Please, she called, send a dress for me to wear to the palace tonight. Once more, the bird sent down a gown even more radiant than the previous two, as well as two beautiful shoes made of gold. Thank you, thank you, Cinderella called and hurried off to the palace. This time, the prince was determined not to let the beautiful girl disappear, and as the evening was ending, he tried to run after her. It was all Cinderella could do to keep ahead of him, and she finally ended up climbing a tree, but she dropped one of her golden shoes. The prince discovered the shoe, and vowing to marry the girl whose foot fit inside, he went home. Cinderella hurried out of the tree and was home asleep in the ashes before anyone else returned. The next day, the prince knocked on every door in the kingdom, trying the shoe on every girl he could find. When he knocked on Cinderella's door, her stepsisters were eager to try on the shoe. Each did everything she could to get her foot inside, but it was no use. Finally, the prince, who was just about to give up, asked, Are there any other girls? No, said Cinderella's stepmother bitterly. There's just my stepdaughter, but she sleeps in the ashes. She is not the girl you are looking for, the hopeful prince insisted. And when Cinderella tried on the shoe, it fit perfectly. And I think you know the rest of the story. <laughs>